Welcome. In this video, we'll explore the Chord Progression tool released with FL Studio 24. Let's start with a chord progression so we're all on the same page. So, what's the hype about chord progressions? They're the emotional core of popular music, memorable and can even define genres. Most important for producers, a solid progression sets the key and harmonic structure, guiding the melody and bass. Nail the progression and the rest of the track becomes much easier to write. That's why we created the Chord Progression Tool. To make great progressions accessible to everyone, even without music theory, it offers chord sets that fit together while also inspiring experienced producers to push their creative boundaries. A quick note before we continue. Chord progressions are in the public domain, meaning they're not protected by copyright. If you hear one you like, you're free to use it without worrying about copyright problems. Let's start by seeing how quickly you can create chord progressions using the tool. So, what did I just do? A quick way to start a project is by using the Create a Chord Progression template from the FL Studio welcome screen. If you've disabled the welcome screen, you can find it in the View menu. The first time you use the Chord Progression tool, a welcome window will appear, but won't show again. After that, the tool will generate a chord progression with a selected key and scale. Hit the spacebar or click play to preview it. To skip through progressions faster, hold Alt or Option and right click to speed run through the chords. The template includes a basic drum pattern for context, but you can click solo to hear just the chords. Don't like the progression? Click Generate for a new one. By default, the tool keeps the previously generated progression's notes, key and scale settings. To reset everything, including the key, switch the mode to Start Over before clicking Generate. If you prefer not to use a generated progression, you can select a preset from the list here. Alternatively, the tool can analyze your existing notes in the piano roll and generate supporting chords. Just write a melody or chords first, then access the chord progression tool from the tools menu or by pressing Alt or Option and P. I like the first two chords, so I'll lock them in. Now I can re-roll while keeping the locked chords unchanged. but I'm still not happy with the last chord. So I can click here to see six alternatives and right click to preview. If none work, re-roll for six more options. Cool. Now I have a chord progression. Let's open the piano roll for the preloaded bass instrument and return to the chord progression tool. 
I'll select all the chords with Ctrl or Command and A and right click them. From the menu, I'll choose Main Notes Off, leaving only the bass notes in the piano roll. Since they're part of the chords, I know they'll fit perfectly. Finally, I'll add a melody with my mouse, as the chord progression tool has added a scale marker to the pattern. With Snap to Scale turned on, I can only paint notes that are in key. Click to add notes, right click to remove them. Easy win. A great melody hack is to use notes matching the chords of each bar. This is a very fast way to create solid melodies, but you can take it further. Now that you know the basics, it's time to dive a little deeper into the chord progression tool. At the bottom, you'll find the performance tab. It lets you arpeggiate, chop up, or humanize your chord progression. Each setting has controls you can fine-tune. If humanization is too heavy, adjust the timing depth. If the chop isn't right, tweak the knobs until it fits. Here's a tip. You can apply these effects to individual chord blocks. If you prefer a specific pattern on one chord, you can change it just for that one. Next, the Advanced tab gives you detailed options for generating chords. The non-diatonic notes setting controls how often chords use notes outside of your chosen scale. Moving this knob also affects the slider at the top. Fewer non-diatonic notes mean more conventional chords. You can also adjust the top slider directly, which controls things like chord extensions, how similar your chords are to common progressions, and how much they match the notes already in your piano roll. You'll also find the chord repeat setting, which adjusts how often chords are used more than once in a row in a progression. Looping bias helps the last chord fit with the first for smooth loops. Finally, you can choose how to handle chord extensions. If you select add, extra notes will be added to the basic chord. If you choose substitute, extensions replace one of the original notes. You can also set the maximum number of extensions. Earlier, we took a quick look at chord blocks, but you can do a whole lot more with them. Chord blocks behave mostly like single notes in the piano roll. You can preview any chord block by itself by holding Alt or Option and right-clicking it. You can also click and drag to move chord blocks or resize them from the right edge. Notice the time ruler? It's displaying bars. You can zoom in and out using Ctrl or Command and the mouse wheel. For finer adjustments, change the snap setting on the right or hold Alt or Option while dragging to temporarily disable snap. Right-click a chord block to access its editing options. You can preview the chord or preview the progression from that chord onward. You can lock a chord from being regenerated while you press generate or do this quickly using this control here. You can also turn off the chord part and leave only the bass note using the main notes option, which we explored previously. The bass note option lets you add an extra bass note with the chord, and you can toggle this with the bass clef icon on chord blocks. These options are also under the spanner icon next to the generate button, where you can manage chord extensions or existing notes. Back under the change chord menu, you can modify the selected chord. Use Regenerate to re-roll the chord. And you can do this without the menu by clicking the icon. The Show Alternatives option, which we've covered before, is accessed by clicking the down arrow. Add Passing Chord splits the chord into two blocks, with the first one leading nicely into the selected chord.
If the tool isn't generating the code you want, you can manually select or type in a code. Or if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can play the chord directly into the tool, like so. Options under Change Notes won't alter the chord itself, but allow you to add or remove notes or change their color. Invert lets you choose chord inversions or change which octave the notes are played in. Accessible from the top right corner of the chord block. Transpose allows you to shift the selected chord or its bass notes up or down by semitones or octaves. The fixed bass option lets you choose a specific bass note instead of the chord's root note. This is useful if you want the third or fifth as the bass. Extra Notes lets you add or remove notes from the chord. You can add extensions like 4 or 11, 13 or 9th, or remove notes like the 3rd, unless the chord doesn't have a 3rd like a SOS4. You can select different voicings. Block is the condensed voicing we've been hearing so far. Open spreads the notes across octaves. Octave adds the lowest chord note an octave higher. And stacked adds another copy of the chord an octave above. A popular technique. You can also select the note color. FL Studio treats each of its 16 note colors as a separate voice or MIDI channel, triggering different instruments. Snap Existing Notes aligns all current piano roll notes to the selected chord. You can link piano roll notes that aren't part of the chord, adding them to the chord block. If you unlink, notes in the chord block are excluded, letting you freely edit and then add your changes back as a chord block. Copy and paste do exactly what you'd expect. Copy a chord block and paste it somewhere else. Swap with lets you rearrange a chord by switching it with its neighbor. Delete removes the chord entirely. Octave sets the octave for the chords. With Transpose active, changing the octave setting will transpose all existing chords. When off, only new chords will be affected. Length determines the duration of newly generated chords. Use Rescale to automatically adjust the length of all chords when the setting changes. And that's every function in the Chord Progression Tool. We hope this video helps you understand how to use it and integrate it into your workflow. Don't forget to check the description for links to the FL Studio Manual and project files we used in this video. Happy music making!